these three things we pray, that you help us to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Please be seated. In the past couple of weeks, I have been spending a fair amount of time talking to folks at Episcopal Relief and Development. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Episcopal Relief and Development, or, or ERD, is an international organization that serves the needs of people, among other things, struck by natural disasters, both at home and abroad, and, and they, are, they are already getting to work at helping us in post-Harvey recovery mode, uh, in, help, in uh, response to Harvey. Before I go any further, they do pass along their thanks for just everything everyone has done, and, uh, and congratulations on the impressive work in our, in our response to the community so far, and assure us that they're, that they're here to help us. But one of the things that has come up in conversation with ERD is they have talked about the three phases of disaster response. And those three phases are rescue, relief, and recovery. Now, the rescue phase, we are by and large past at this point. That's the phase where we were going out and, and saving people by, by boat or by pickup truck, sometimes by helicopter, saving them from their homes, getting them to where they would be safe. And, and thanks be to God, that work is, is very well done. For many of us, we are actually already well into or through relief as well, as people didn't have power or water or, and the supply lines to bring fresh groceries into the city were cut off. We went to work in relief mode and making sure people had the water they needed, making sure they had access to food, shelter, and y'all have done an amazing job here. At St. Stephen's here in Beaumont, you've done an amazing job. Last count I had heard in our, in our makeshift distribution center we had set up, we had helped over 3,000 people at last count I had seen to get water made and water, medicine, baby supplies, the things that they needed to get through until supplies could get back in. So thank you all for the amazing work that you've been doing, and thank you also for everyone who has taken someone in when they didn't have a home, made sure somebody had a safe place to stay for the night. We, we have rocked the relief part fairly well. And we are now into recovery. And it's in recovery mode now that I have started to have conversation with folks in this struggle to figure out how do we recover? And I hear again and again, how do we get back to normal? How do we get back to normal? And that's when I was reading our Old Testament reading for this week. Reading about another group of people who had been struck with a catastrophe, in this case, the Hebrews. Now, their catastrophe was that they had been enslaved by the Egyptians. Um, that's a little bit different than a hurricane, but in the same way, a catastrophe has struck them and, and destroyed their way of life, has taken their way of life from them. And I'm sure that feels familiar to many, many of us here. Now, God did not forsake them. God was there for them. The story of the Passover is the story of a God who loves them and says, I will see you through to the other side. You will get to the promised land, and it will be good. You will have life again. But it strikes me, this week is the very first time I was reading it and I realized, yes, they will have the promised land. It will be good but they won't be getting back the lives that they had. They can't. God has promised them that he will love them and he will see them through to the other side, but it will be different than the life that they had. And that is certainly true for us, too. We will get through this. God loves us and is present and is seeing us through to our new life in the promised land on the other side. But it won't be what it was. So in this mode of recovery, we are pivoting away from thinking about how do we get back to normal, and maybe should instead be asking ourselves, how do we achieve the new normal that we will have on the other side? Now fortunately, our lessons from the Bible offer a few things about that as well. 
And I want to offer you three things. It's actually one thing, but it's three parts. And the first of those is the call to love our neighbor. Paul says to the Romans that everything, everything that we're doing is based in this call to love our neighbor as ourselves. And again, the people of St. Stephen's, you all have been doing an amazing job loving your neighbors. Uh, well, well, thank you. I mean, it's together that we have been doing this. And, and I, I honestly, actually, I'm proud, proud to be a part of this community. And there's no place I would rather be than than with y'all serving and loving our neighbors here in the church, sometimes complete strangers who have been in need and we have gone to work and we have loved them. So, so we've done a great job. Check, off the list. But the work in the months and the weeks to come of loving our neighbor will continue. That is the new normal. We're gonna build on the other side will be a new normal founded on that love of our neighbor. Now, the other part of that is the part we don't talk about as much, which is the love your neighbor as yourself. And I know there are people in this room, myself included, that sometimes don't pay as much attention to that part, the love yourself part. And that's going to be extremely important. In the time going forward, as we are rebuilding to this new normal on the other side, we need to take care of ourselves. And so I'm asking each and every one of you to make sure you take care of yourself, love yourself, make sure you're getting what you need in this community. We're doing a great job handing out bottles of water to people who need it, but make sure you have enough water for yourself, both physically and metaphorically. The third of those three things, so we've got to love your neighbor, to love yourself, let others love you too. And our gospel reading for this Sunday, Jesus goes on and on about the church as a community, as a group. Even going so far as to say that wherever two or three are gathered, Jesus is there. And it's not because when one person is there, Jesus isn't going to waste his time. It's not worth it. Like, that's not who he's talking about. <laughs> it's because when, you're, when you are not in a relationship, there is something fundamentally missing. We are only truly the people God has made us to be when we're in relationship with someone else, when the love is going both ways. Love your neighbor, but let them love you too. I know we're relational beings because God is relational and we are made in the image of God. And so it's when we are rebuilding this new normal that we will have on the other side with each other, it'll be good and it'll be the promised land for us if we build it on those three things. Loving our neighbor, loving ourselves, and letting others love us too. Now, we were supposed to have our uh, a ministry fair today where we were going to go into Bros Hall and sort of celebrate the ministries and learn about the ministries of the church. But I think instead, this Sunday, the one ministry that we really still need to focus on when we go into Bros Hall is this ministry of love. So when you go into Bros Hall, we're going to have we're going to have food. We're going to have a chance to hug each other sometimes, maybe for the first time since, since this all went down. Take the chance to love someone before you go. Make sure you love yourself in some little way before you go and give somebody the chance to love you. This day is the day that we will mark our work toward the new normal that we'll have on the other side. And this new world that we're building, if it's founded in this kind of love, it will be good. It will be God filled. And it'll be a world we will all be proud that we can live together. Thanks, you guys.